how often do guild regulations come into play when it comes to uh, problem solving and, and, and disputes between departments? And when I ask that, I mean, have you ever encountered a situation, and I'm sure the answer is yes, where one department wanted to do something and said, oh, we want this not to happen this way. And in doing so, it would violate a rule that somebody else has set in place and say, I can't do that because the guild says this, that, and the other well, thing. It's as much about guilds as it is also safety. For example, um, it, I work with kids, mm -hmm. and as, as such, each network will have their own certain restrictions based on their legal department and standards and practices, on what the child can do. Mm -hmm. um, at some networks, you can have a kid do a magic trick and put a quarter in his mouth and then stick his tongue out. And other networks, they won't let you do that because they don't want kids copying it and putting quarters in their mouth. They'll get letters and they could get sued. And they just say, sense. you know what, it's not worth it. Come up with a, an, an equally funny joke that doesn't involve the kid putting a quarter in his mouth. Mm -hmm. You run into these situations, and so because I get to do it a lot, I get to see a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, Guild-wise, you're also restricted on things you can do with, with kids. There, I think it's still in there. There's a... There's a a regulation in the SAG book that you can't put actors in the water 30, before 30 minutes after a meal. And that's, I, you know, that's some I thought they debunked that. And yeah. it's debunked, but it's still in, it's still, I think it's still in, hmm. you know. Um, there's regulations on when you should eat. There's regulations on when you should wrap. But regulations on how many hours you can work a kid. There's regulations on who can do a stunt and who can, when you need a stunt coordinator. If I were to have you standing up here and fall over onto the ground, I'd probably want to have a stunt coordinator here. Mm -hmm. Now, if I know you as an actor and I know you're capable of doing pratfalls, I might say, okay, that's an easy one. He can do it. All right? Mm -hmm. and there are other actors that I actually know I would never have them do that because it's just not what they do. You know? It's a skill. Physical comedy is a skill mm -hmm. set. Or, or, and when I say physical comedy, that can also apply to um, action films and other things as well. Um, there's rules involving diving. There's... You know, Anything we do, there's some regulation, and there's a whole uh, there's a website where you can go to. But there's a whole list of safety memos. We work in California, which is particularly careful about its workers, and there's whole things we've got a whole list of things we've got to go through and communicate with you. I'll have safety meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I'll talk to the teamsters and go, okay, we need to move that car. Well, a teamster drives that car. Uh, why? Well, you think, wow, well, why do I need a teamster? Can I just have a PA do it? That's a bad idea. Well, yes, you can, and um, Galpin Ford on the 405 is very familiar with fixing trucks driven by PAs. <laughs> um, I once, and just a quick little anecdote, we, we hired a kid. He was the producer's nephew, mm -hmm. classic story, and the producer said to me, hey, it's, it's 7 in the morning. I know you're coming to the office. Can you pick this guy up, drop him off, because I know he lives near you, to Galpin on the way into the office. He's going to pick up the truck. Okay. I don't think any of nice fellow, mm -hmm. USC, probably going to be a producer boss of mine in two years, mm -hmm. if, certainly if he's connected. So we drop him off and I go on my way. Around lunchtime, we get a phone call. He's crying. He's decided in order to save time on his runs that he wouldn't get out of the truck and get lunch at the Jack in the Box. He went through the drive-thru. <laughs> oh. And he peeled the top of the truck off. <laughs> he didn't peel Brand the top new off truck. of the Jack in the Box. 18 miles on it at that point. <laughs> and the top of the cube band w was like a can opener. It took it off. And we felt really bad for the guy. Because this, but this, this explains the, the sort of lesson here, and that is put people in a position to succeed. Do not put them in a position to fail. Mm -hmm. And by them succeeding, your project is succeeding. It doesn't do me any good to be able to go to the people watching the show. This scene would have been great, but I hired this guy and I made fun of him, and he drove the truck into a tree. <laughs> no one watching the show will care. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it goes on the DVD and the behind-the-scenes thing, but who cares? Yeah. Uh, my goal is to successfully do the day, and the guild regulations are really important because some of them can be simple, like, guy goes up in a man lift. You've got to put a harness on. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I just got to get the light. No, get your harness on. It's OSHA. It's union. Put the harness on. I don't need you falling out of that lift and making me do paperwork. <laughs> Worse, you might fall on me. So we don't want any of that. Absolutely. Um, every light in the ceiling here has got a safety chain on it. I hope. Why? There are rules. If the little clampy bit fails, guess what? It's not going to fall on you. It's, it's just smart. You wear a belt with pants. Why? Your pants might fall off. Well, you got a button. Yeah, a button zipper, but it still might fall. You wear a belt. You wear a safety belt in a the car. There are reasons why all these things are in place. Mm -hmm. Some of them might seem cumbersome, but i got to know them all. 
is it difficult to keep all that in your head, or do you find yourself constantly referencing like a like a cheat sheet to um, remind yourself, like, oh, there, I'm, there I'm is with a, kids. I better look at the list of things that I can't do with kids. There are there are cheat sheets out there. One of them, there's a guy at my union who created a, a list called Welch's Rules and Jeffords Rules. Welch's is for commercials, and Jeffords is for film and TV, and it's sort of a condensed version of of all the union's issues, category by category. Mm -hmm. And um, I found he started doing that about 10 or 15 years ago. Wonderful list. But even so, I'll still pick up the phone and I'll call up the payroll services or I'll call up the network's uh, legal department. What can we do in this situation? Mm -hmm. what, are the, what are the variances? And, you know, so it, it's, it may never have come up before. Um, it could be a new format of shooting. Mm -hmm. It could be, um, you know, how do we deal with the situation of an actor working on our set for eight hours and then going to another set for eight hours? for the same company but a different job. Mm -hmm. Did they leave us and start a new time card? How does that work? Or are they still theoretically employed off the, you know, so what if I hire extras to do two different episodes in one day's work? Do I own for both episodes, but I only paid, I only hired them for one day? So there's rules and regulations that I'll often reference just to make sure mm -hmm. because they do change.